I woke up Thursday to see the latest entry on the list of my friends and colleagues to get the social media hit, and it really screwed up my morning. Comedian Owen Benjamin simultaneously punished by both Twitter and YouTube, his Twitter account outright banned, and his YouTube live streaming revoked, this according to a post on his Facebook page. It's not clear exactly why, though I do know immediately prior to the banning, Owen was tweeting and streaming some rather spicy commentary about David Hogg. It was admittedly edgy material, but it was it wasn't threats, it wasn't any type of harassment, it was commentary on public issues raised by a person who has made himself a public figure. It was no edgier than David Hogg's own commentary. When I saw that Owen was banned, it really started my day off on the wrong foot. I hate to see this increasingly authoritarian culture that demands we all conform to what the authority deems the correct forms of speech or thought or face the consequences. And I was tweeting my displeasure with this creeping authoritarianism. And whenever I'm discussing this topic, free speech generally, free speech as a cultural value, I always get the same smarmy response from a handful of self-appointed philosopher kings who think they're revealing some previously unknown technicality. Ha! Twitter's a private company, bro. Owen has no right to their platform. Checkmate. Ha! Twitter's a private company, bro. There's no First Amendment issue here. Checkmate. Ha! The First Amendment only protects you from government, bro. Free speech doesn't apply here. Checkmate. As though I disagree, as though I'm arguing that Twitter and YouTube have an obligation to host Owen or anyone else and ought to be forced to. Of course, I don't think that. The issue here is not the application of the First Amendment. The issue here is the cultural value that precedes the First Amendment, the cultural value that wrote the First Amendment in the first place. That's what I'm really worried about. There are plenty of things that are square with the First Amendment, yet clearly erode the spirit of it. Think of all the stories we've seen recently. I don't like what you said, so I'm gonna pressure your employer to have you fired. Or I don't like what you said, so I'm gonna pressure your sponsors to stop advertising on your show. Or worst of all, I don't like what you said, so I'm going to stifle your speech by physical force. I don't like what you said, so I'll see to it that you're punished in any way that I can. If I'm to follow the wisdom of these tweeters in my mentions, as long as it's not the state doing the punishing, I'm supposed to wipe my hands and say everything's just fine, nothing to see here, no problems at all. I disagree. And I think if you're a fan of the First Amendment, if you're a fan of the general principle that people ought to be free to speak their minds without punishment, you shouldn't look the other way as our culture becomes increasingly censorious. Not just because the end result of a cultural standard that devalues free speech is the same as a legal standard to the same effect, but because it's foolish to think that cultural standards don't become legal ones. To the first point, it confuses me that people claim to support the First Amendment on a philosophical level, yet have no dispute when culture violates that philosophy or those values. Why do we support the First Amendment? Why do we consider it a good or a necessary thing? Most people, myself included, subscribe to the marketplace of ideas theory, the idea that all thoughts should be exchanged freely such that they can compete with the good ideas naturally rising and the bad ideas naturally falling. We ought to let natural competition do that separation of good ideas from bad, not the government hand. If you believe that, why would you support intervention in that marketplace from any other authority? Why would you support intervention from a corporation or from an outrage mob? If you believe in the marketplace of ideas, you ought to oppose any force hostile to it not just government force. But to the second point, it's foolish to think sitting idly by as the cultural value of free speech erodes won't have legal consequences. Quote Andrew Breitbart, politics is downstream from culture. If you cultivate a culture that punishes people for wrong think, it's only a matter of time before the legal standard follows. If we're all fine with privately ruining a man's livelihood for having the wrong opinions, it's hard to argue we'd suddenly be opposed to government doing the same thing. At that point, it's just a question of who's doing the punishing and not the principle of whether the punishment is justified or not. Our laws, up to and including our constitution, are legal articulations of cultural norms. If you would oppose a legal standard punishing speech, you ought to oppose a 
cultural standard that does the same thing. Now maybe Owen Benjamin's brand of comedy isn't for you. Maybe you don't even view it as comedy at all, just outrageous provocation. But the question we must keep in perspective is who should make that distinction? Should each individual get to say, huh, this guy's pretty funny. I think I'll consume more of his work. Or, huh, this guy sucks. I think I'll move on to something that's more to my taste. Should the government or corporate America or the biggest outrage mob make that choice for us? Or should each individual make that choice for himself or herself? I'd like it to be a choice you make for yourself, not a choice someone else makes for you. So if I haven't yet persuaded you to my perspective by appealing to your sense of altruism, your concern for your fellow man and a belief that he ought to be free to speak his mind, allow me to appeal to your sense of selfishness. Uphold a cultural value of free speech because you should be free to decide what content is suitable for your consumption and what content isn't. I don't want to decide that for you. I don't want outrage mobs to decide that for you. I don't want corporations to decide that for you. I don't want government to decide that for you. I want you to decide that for you. And if you agree, if you want that freedom for yourself, protect it for others. Otherwise, it's just a question of where you land on the list of who's next. Thanks as always for listening and for supporting this channel always. Appreciate that thoughtful discussion down below and especially over on Twitter. That is at ML Christensen. You're always welcome to coming out and chatting my live streams. Those are linked down in the description. Looking forward to it. Come on.